Walker, right here, Sharp Facets Gallery, 407 in the afternoon. And when you talk about variety, yesterday we were interviewing a POW from World War II. And here we are today with Steve Coleman, who is the director of Project Genesis out there at Piedmont Tech. Talk about variety. We've got something for everyone. Steve <laughs> Coleman, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, and how are you? I'm good. I'm good. 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 Glad to be back. Yeah, it's nice to uh, always get updates how programs are going and what's happening. And of course, uh, a year ago we were talking about Project Genesis, and what exactly is Project Genesis? Project Genesis is exactly what it was a year ago. Okay. Well, for those that might not have heard it. <laughs> but we've, so we've progressed quite a bit. Project Genesis is a federal grant program that uh, is now firmly uh, implanted at Piedmont Technical College. It is a program that is designed, uh, and at its core, the function is to uh, increase enrollment, retention, uh, and graduation rates for African-American males. Okay. And how is that program going? It is going quite well. Um, we've progressed uh, into year three, year two, year three okay. of, of the program. Um, originally, we started out with, with a cohort of 60 black males. Now our cohort consists of 100 black males um, in different disciplines, uh, computer technology, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, um, industrial electronics, and mechatronics. And we now have incorporated the Associate in Arts program, uh, as well as criminal justice and human services. And what is the purpose of the program? The purpose of the program is to improve society as a whole mm -hmm. by getting a, a, an educated uh, and, and prepared group of African American males that are prepared to go out into society and uh, perform a, a multitude of tasks, um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematically uh, founded um, jobs and occupations. Uh, and most importantly, um, the program is designed to attract, enroll, um, support, and graduate black males. Because? because it's needed, it's necessary. Um, because the statistics this, point that we don't have this happening. Well, this is absolutely the case. Um, we all have read articles and hear stories daily, uh, it seems, of uh, the failures of academia as it relates to African American males. We, we see the statistics that show or seem to depict that there are more African American males on, on uh, prison yards than there are on college campuses. Um, programs such as this are, are, are designed to um, address that issue and to provide opportunities or to provide an impetus for more African American males to see or have access to education. And you know, when you couple it with an institution like Piedmont Technical College, where education is so accessible and affordable, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, you know, the groundwork is laid for success, and we just have to do the work that's necessary. And Piedmont Tech is definitely willing to do that work. Well, they are very aggressive on all fronts, whether, uh, you know, in all the programs that they work. If there's grant money out there to work with a program, it seems like Piedmont Tech is on it. Yes, uh, you know, I, I'm very proud of Piedmont, um, and uh, that's not a job security plug. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really honestly... In case anybody in power is listening here today, yes, okay. <laughs> But uh, I, I am very proud of, 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 of my association with the college and where the college is going. Um, you know, we're an open door institution, mm -hmm. and so we provide opportunities for students who otherwise may not even approach education because of a number of reasons, most notably financing the cost of a college education. I mean, when you, when you have an institution of the academic quality, of Piedmont and, and the academic quality of the state technical college system and uh, those individuals who don't come from affluence, mm -hmm. uh, those individuals who come from working class families can afford a, a, a top-notch education. They can get enough training at Piedmont Tech to go out and do wonderful things or they can make They can those go right to work. Absolutely, absolutely. Or transfer to a four-year school. That's absolutely correct. 
So uh, th those are some of the awesome things. Now, in this, is it just been a year, year and a half program? Uh, Project Genesis, now we're in our third year. Third year. So it's been going on two years. Two years. So what have we seen out of this two year? Have we graduated some students? Or We've, yes, we have. Uh, we've graduated seven students. Okay. And now we have to be careful because the, the nature of the technical college system is sometimes students take a little bit longer. Uh, they, they take less courses. We also have students that uh, sometimes start in developmental coursework where they have to improve their reading, writing, and mathematics skills. I think the misperception in, in many cases is that you know, when you can go to the technical college and you study heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, or um, computer technology, or even uh, programs such as welding or automotive technology, that there's no need for the the, the other stuff. Yeah, but but these are students that have to be very literate. They have to be, have a comprehensive education, and we provide that through uh, you know elective coursework that is in English and math and some social science and 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 other types of uh, courses. Um, but we've graduated seven students. Okay. Our retention rate is well over 75 percent of the students that have um, enrolled in our programs. Um, we deal with the with the uh, perennial, it's not a problem, it's, 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 it's something that that is just a norm in the technical college where students sometimes have to stop out a semester for work-related issues. And when you're dealing with institutions where you're, you're uh, uh, population is, is not a on-campus in the dorm population. Your average age is not 18, 19. It's more like 26, 27. Some of those life situations can interrupt from time to time. Yeah, they get in the way, don't they? <laughs> they do. Even when you're not in school, they can get in the way, can't they? <laughs> they do. They do. So we're going to be talking about the uh, Project Genesis. I uh, want to hear more about what is happening. You will be amazed at the things that they're able to do and what uh, some of this grant money was able to bring in. If I remember correctly, you were able to bring in uh, actual equipment that they would work on, and uh, for particularly in the STEM program and this type of thing. So we're going to talk about some of these things. They actually get to work on a heating and cooling unit. Am I right on that? Yes? Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to talk more about that. We're also, I hope, going to get into Call Me Mr. program. And even an interesting thing that Steve has started, ourpeopletoday.com. So we'll mention that one too, if that's okay. That's perfectly fine. All right. Well, we're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. My very special guest today is Steve Coleman. He is the director of Project Genesis, a really fascinating program that started back in 2011. It has been uh, has been dollars granted in through 2015. And one of the things that you need to understand with this program is that yes, it is exclusively for black males, but the other thing about it is that. They have to pay, whether they pay for it through scholarships or financial aid or any of these things. They're paying for this program. It's really the equipment and the services set up to do this program. Is that correct, Steve? Yes, that is correct. Um, I, I always you know, I want people to understand that a lot of times um, the, the uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, there's a lot of negativity that's associated with what appear to be social help or quote unquote welfare types of programs. Well, the, the students that are participating in Project Genesis are paying for their education just as any other student that goes to Piedmont Tech is. They uh, are receiving money through the FAFSA or federal Pell Grants. Uh, many of them have student loans. Many lottery. Of them are lottery tuition assistance. Many of them South Carolina Educational Opportunities mm -hmm. Grants. All of those services that every other student takes takes a, a part in. But there's not a handout. But there's this. not a handout. We, we don't, this program is, is based on the services and the, and the uh, equipment and contextual learning assistance that we provide through the college. Um, so it's not a situation where we, we have identified 60 uh, African American males, actually now 100 African American males, we're paying for them to go to college. Um, it's about the way it is. Yeah, that's not the way it is. They are there because they want to be. Um, we've recruited them and, and they've gone through the process like any other student at, at Piedmont and they found the money. Mm -hmm. um, and once they are in the program, um, 
the educational aids, things like contextual learning equipment and HVAC and computer technology equipment and computer technology. These are, this is equipment that's going to not only help African American males to be successful because they're a part of the program, but it's not exclusively for the use of African American males. White students, uh, Hispanic students, Asian students, anyone who's in those programs also benefits, benefits. from this, 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 this equipment as well. And you, you were telling me off the air that this is, um, th now this is a program, you said it was an institutional grant, so by, by what does that mean? Well, it's the, the uh, one of the, the um, caveats. caveats for, for PBI, the Project Genesis is a grant that falls under the federal government's Department of Education's predominantly black institutions grant. Um, in order to have the program, you have to have a percentage of 40% of your student body has to be minorities, and Piedmont met that requirement. Um, also, uh, to you, the institution has to make a commitment to institutionalize the services provided by the grant. So in essence, uh, at the end of 2015, Project Genesis will be institutionalized within the institution. So we'll become an office of, for lack of a better term right now, uh, Office of Minority Student Advocacy for all students across all disciplines of the college. That's, a, that, that, that's pretty awesome. So, uh, so the money that's being paid into this will be establishing. Now, the types. Of, one of the big things about this is the types of equipment that they have the advantage of, that the college reaps the advantage of, too. I can remember us talking about when you first started, you were going to be getting HVAC equipment. You weren't just going to study it in a book or on a computer screen. You actually have that equipment there. Absolutely. The, uh, the, the, the focus of the grant is contextual training via within the STEM programs. And again, that's, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematically based programs. Um, in our HVAC program, for, for example, um, there's equipment and that is just incredible. They, these air conditioning control trainers, simulation machines uh, in our um, uh, computer technology program, new thin clients and different software and, and uh, other apparatus that, that, that really improve the hands-on learning of students. Uh, we've had the ability to uh, establish labs, uh, HVAC lab equipment, and to establish computer labs for students to be able to go in and uh, um, access the computers to do work among many disciplines in the college, but also the applicable software to learn the skills necessary to get a degree in computer technology. Uh, in the new cohorts, I mean, we've got a criminal justice lab that you know, probably Does it rival uh, <laughs> South Carolina, the uh, the state lab down there? You know what, I'll tell you what, uh, okay. by, by scale, probably so. I mean, we, we <laughs> probably don't have the room or space of the South Carolina lab, but I'll bet you Josh Lindsay, who's our Director of Criminal Justice, will tell you that he is extremely proud of what, what's been provided for the students at Piedmont Technical College through the PBI grant. And that has probably way uplifted their ability and understanding. I mean, you're probably able to do CSI just uh, right out there at Tech now. Hey, we've even bought forensics kits. I'm telling so you. So these, these, these young men and women who are part of, these young men and women who are part of the criminal justice programs. Um, are reaping some, the benefits. Re reaping the benefits, really cutting edge equipment. Um, Which they didn't have before. Well, that's true. I, I mean, mean, did they have the they quality did, of no, equipment that we that you have been able to provide through this grant? We've been able to, um, above and beyond what's already budgeted within mm -hmm. an institutional budget, to um, to accentuate that with you know some PBI funding, with some Genesis funding to to get bigger equipment, um, you know, like, uh, driving simulators, and 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 uh, uh, <laughs> this, it's really incredible. Yeah. Well, you know, that's one of the things that's so neat. And, and how, do you, how do you identify the students? How, how do you identify the students to become part of this program? I mean, if somebody's out there listening this afternoon and they go, God, this sounds like something I'd be interested in. Well, there were uh, parameters that were set. Um, we, they had to be first-year students in one of the, core, in one of the uh, programs. Mm -hmm. um, because what we wanted to do was to show that we could take a student who was relatively new, um, and and uh, nurture them, assist them, grow with them as they go through the process from that point of being a new student to graduation. Mm -hmm. um, 
we've established a cohort of 100 and, and we're with that cohort now and we're going to ride that cohort all the way through until we, we get final uh, retention and graduation numbers. But the unique part about it is that once the program is institutionalized, students that um, come in at any level will be able to, to assist them as you know through the grant through the through the through the office within right. the institution. Um, one of the major things that, that is that, that is important is, is not the, necessarily the equipment. Mm -hmm. It's just knowing that there's somebody there to talk to that is really caring about uh, what's what's going on with me in classrooms. Um, I've got a tremendous staff of people. Um, it starts even with our project director Andy Omanson and, and myself and uh, um, the president is is, is just Dr. Brooks. At, at, at Dr. Brooks is just phenomenally supportive of what we're doing. Um, uh, our case managers and instructional specialists. You know, the guys in our program are really shocked at how much we know about them because we make it a point to know know things about them. And gain in other words, they can't hide. They can't. <laughs> we, we, we <laughs> you get them out there, and, and right. that's and that's that's the uh, that's the the focus. We don't want them to be able to hide, and sure. we we want them to we we want to go to them when they're doing extremely well, but we also want them don't want them to trust us to the point where. When they're not doing well, we call them on, and, and, and we don't wait for them to come to us. Our faculty is tremendous in terms of uh, completing progress reports and sending back information for, for us on those guys on top of everything else they do and on top of their already mandated midterm and year-end reports. So we ask them to do extra, and they do. Um, what so about, the, are there any extra classes that they're taking? That are that are separate that are for students in the Genesis Genesis program. No, no. I mean, there's not like some special mm -hmm. class training or something like they that. They take the same courses that every other student in every other program would take. Okay. All right. Well, this is uh, this is good to hear. You've expanded it. So, a hundred students is the max that you're going to be working through during this grant period. During this program. grant period. Yes. And so, really, you have one more year. Yes. Through what? Uh, 2015. Well, that is, uh, that is what is happening at Piedmont Tech, and I know that with your commitment to this, it's going to be a success, right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. How do the students react to all this attention that they get? You know, they love it. You know, they're like, you know, they, I think our youngest guy now is, is 18, and our oldest is 53. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 20-year-old guys who are new and young and raw, you know, it's it's really kind of neat to them that someone is is really paying that much attention to them and and uh, and, and and. How those, about the fifty three year old guy? You know, sometimes the fifty three year old guys are like, "All right, Steve, I got this." Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I would really appreciate you helping me out, but I, but I got this. But the unique thing is what we've done is is some of our older students and more successful students and, and who have been in the program and have got more hours under their belt and are doing well. They are we we bring them on as peer mentors, and so the younger students are able to to uh, identify with them and see their successes and and uh, and, and the, the, the older guys are really really great at, at kind of reaching back and making sure that these young these young bucks that are in the program know that hey man you can get this done I got it done my background is no different than yours it, it's a relationship it's a partnership between them and they really enjoy helping the younger students that's terrific. Well, we are here at Sharp Facets Gallery. We are talking to Steve Coleman. He is the director of Project Genesis. We're going to hear uh, South Carolina news. Hey, if you've got a question, don't hesitate to call 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? or a college tuition hung on a wall, or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box. Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. My very special guest, Steve Coleman, Director of Project Genesis out at Piedmont Tech. And we've been talking about some of the uh, good things that the program can do. It is uh, currently working with 100 young men out there at Piedmont Tech. 
And Steve, you have added a lot of equipment. I know when I first talked to you, this program was brand new. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you were going to be purchasing this and purchasing that. And of course, you said you've established the program and now it's, it's pretty much falling into a, into a pattern. But what about, what about the uh, Call Me Mister program? That's another thing that you're involved in, I think. Yes. yes. Uh, Call Me Mister is an education initiative. Uh, it is a program that was started via Clemson University. And the purpose of Call Me Mister is to, in, in its shortest form, is to get more African American males into classrooms as teachers. Uh, it is a particularly in the elementary school. Particularly in the elementary yeah, at the elementary are. level to expose more young African American males to identifiable positive role models, um, people that they feel like they can relate to. Um, as we were talking earlier, you know, I, I would be I, I would I would feel completely comfortable in saying that every superintendent in every school district that you would question is looking for African American males to hire. To, to lead their class. Well, what does that mean? They have an advantage, Steve? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it doesn't mean that they have an advantage, but there is an absolute and definite need. Um, uh, I'm a very well-educated person, uh, but it's not because I had any African-American male role models in classrooms when I was growing up, growing up in school, because I didn't. Well, you were a basketball player uh, that, yeah, for yeah, a while. Yeah, basketball player. Yeah. Um, of course, I had black coaches, right. but black coaches and black teachers are something completely different. Okay. You know, most of it, it, it's pretty easy <clears throat> to teach someone, even such as myself, um, to do something that they enjoy doing. That you know, it's it's a sport, it's a game, it's fun. But it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different and, and more difficult to teach someone to, you know factor fractions or factor uh, 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 equations uh, and, and to write well and to to uh, cultivate a love of reading and, and, and fact finding and scientific discovery and African American males um, I mean let's let's just be frank the statistics are dire uh, when, it, when it comes down to education and, and uh, we talked earlier about the number of African American males on college campuses. Well, when we start talking about dropout rates and crime rates and all these things that affect the ability for young black males to uh, uh, pursue an education. Uh, well, it has to be cool to pursue an education, doesn't it? In some aspects, doesn't it? In some it? aspects. Doesn't it need it, to be? Know, it, it does. And, and it needs to be something that's the coolest thing. Right. If there was a way we could put some swag, as my <laughs> sons would say. <laughs> Uh, on education, well, maybe we could really amp it up and, and, and really get the ball rolling in terms of educational pursuits and educational excellence for African American males. But that's the, the, the uh, goal of the program. Um, you know, you're a young black male, you're in a classroom, and all of a sudden now you see someone up there that looks just like you. And that's, that's huge. Um, you know, it's pretty easy. I mean, you've always seen people in, in, in situations, and that look just like you. Yeah. For a lot of young, I have, for yes. For a lot of young African-American males, that hasn't been the case. And that's a powerful thing. Well, um, and, and you know, usually, usually you always have thought of elementary school as being a woman's prerogative for teaching. You, you, you have. A, uh, yeah, as a traditional field. Yes. I would agree with that. So whether it's black or white, you haven't really seen that many males in the elementary school level. Right. That that is true. That is true. And you know, Call Me Mister is not a program that's that that uh, it's important to to, to 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 note that this is not stating that an African American male can't have a positive relationship with a non African American teacher. Mm -hmm. um, it, but it is saying, however, that anytime we can increase the diversity of our classrooms, it behooves us in education to do so. Sure. So um, now, now at Piedmont Tech, of course, is not a four-year school, so it can't uh, grow teachers. Well, it can it can grow the interest and right. it can grow the preparation. What we are doing um, with the Call Me Mister programs in the state technical college system is partnering with institutions, with four-year institutions, 
Um, there's a seamless transfer, for instance, for a Piedmont Technical College student who wants to major in education and who's identified himself as a Call Me Mr. Uh, participant in our program. They can transfer to Lander, which has an education program sure. and has a vibrant Call Me Mr. program. So there's a continuation uh, via partnerships with four-year institutions, uh, Anderson University, uh, Southern Wesleyan University, of course, Clemson, South Carolina, and some of the HBCUs, Benedict, Morris College, Claflin University, um, for those African-American males or non-African-American males who choose to go to a historically black college or university. Um, uh, those institutions provide an opportunity for education, and they also are called me Mr. Uh, okay. Institutions. And uh, gosh, wasn't it on Tuesday, I think you all had a transfer program where a lot of colleges were on campus uh, talking about the transfer, and you have so many good relationships, Piedmont Tech does, with a lot of different schools to transfer easily. Yes. Uh, of course, the, 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 the technical college system was founded on technical training. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, the college transfer programs have grown tremendously. And there are programs that are technical programs um, where there are transfer routes uh, as well. You, you don't necessarily have to be an associate in arts only student in mm -hmm. order to transfer to a four year institution. Uh, we have our students are transferring from a number of different areas. Sure. So it really is exciting what you have going on out there at Piedmont Tech. Yes. You know, didn't uh, didn't the um, automotive division just get a what a nine speed or something transmission, an actual working transmission out there? Yeah, the, our automotive technology program is one of the best in the state. Yeah, uh, one of the best in the southeast, and 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 the technology that has been available to them in that lab has grown exponentially over the last few years, uh, and it continues to grow. But when you're turning out top notch automotive technologists, right. Uh, you know, people want to invest in programs that are turning out the, the best talent. Sure. So, you know, when you when you think of Piedmont Tech, and uh, you, you really need to think about the fact that it is top notch, and this is where the Genesis program is actually going to contribute to the uh, good things happening out there at Piedmont Tech with all the different programs that uh, you are in helping influence with the equipment and whatnot that you're getting out there. Yes. Um, you know, as I've I've, all, I've often stated that I that I truly honestly feel that Piedmont Technical College is one is is amongst and, and the single greatest change agent in our service district in our areas of Greenwood, Lawrence, Edgefield, Abbeville, McCormick, Newberry, and Saluda. We know that we are moving into an era where um, you've got to be trained, even for. What, what we one would think were used to be what they called assembly line jobs. You, you have to have a set of marketable skills. And from an affordability and an access standpoint, there's no better way to get those uh, and make them available to you than through the technical college system. Sure. And of course, um, and y'all are very aggressive out there on yes. going and, you know, uh, recruiting students. Uh, recruiting grants, recruiting uh, stuff to be able to work on. I mean, you you guys never stop. Okay. We we feel like we an are economic engine out there. I might add. <laughs> yes. As the young youngsters would say, we feel like we are the bomb at Piedmont. <laughs> You're the bomb. All right. Hey, we, uh, <laughs> we feel like you know it's 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 our role. It's our responsibility to be the absolute best institution that we can possibly be and to provide opportunities for all students. Our Motto at Piedmont Tech is, is you know, our vision is, is meet people where they are and take them where they want to go, which means, you know, wherever you are in your life, whether you're a traditional aid student that's, that's looking to get started or you're someone who has experienced layoff through economic downturn or if you just decide, you know what, I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be a to radio personality. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. To do. <laughs> okay. You know, we can come up with a communications degree if we have to. Well, see, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Piedmont Tech is always on it. Yes. yes. All right. Let's hear a quick word from our sponsors. We'll come back. We're going to talk a little bit about the new program, the new initiative that uh, President Obama has come up with, My Brother's Keeper. And I also want to talk a little bit about ourpeopletoday.com. So don't you. Go away. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. And, uh, you know, gosh, what was it? Uh, end of January, uh, President Obama announced a new program called My Brother's Keeper. 
and um, he wanted to uh, build an opportunity for uh, boys and young men of color to uh, come together, but it, it's not just a government program, it's also foundations and corporations, so it's a business and government program. Um, Steve, what, what have you heard about this program? Well, I've read a lot about it, and I've, uh, uh, I've seen numerous news clippings and, and, and uh, President Obama uh, talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, at its core, uh, you know, fundamentally, it, it's doing what we've all been trying to do in communities throughout the country, uh, is to increase educational opportunities um, for a cohort of individuals who have been underrepresented uh, in higher education. Um, I think one of the beauties of it is, is it, it's not saying that the opportunity has, hasn't always been there. So it's not blaming anyone, mm -hmm. which, which is what I really like. It's not saying that the, the uh, uh, secondary, school, secondary school system or, or the K through 12 has, has uh, failed anyone. What it's mm -hmm. saying is, is in our communities, we have to take a responsibility um, as a unit for some of the failures that have occurred. And the title, you know, my brother's keeper, it, it simply means, look, I'm going to be responsible for doing all that I possibly can to assist a young man uh, or an individual to, to navigate the educational process and, and reap the benefits um, of success in life and work and relationships, social, which builds, economical. Which, which builds better communities. And which builds better communities. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, we'll, uh, this is a program that I think he is putting together at this moment, mm -hmm. and they are going to be coming out with an initiative on this. But you know, one of the things that I've always been so impressed with Greenwood is how many things in Greenwood that really are there that help with some of these things. For example, First Steps. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, the executive director of First Steps, uh, uh, Michael Gaskins, is very passionate about what he does. Um, and, you know, if you've ever heard him speak about it, you, you know, get ready for a fire and brimstone speech and no punches pulled. Um, he's very real and down to earth, and the programs that he runs out of First Steps is designed uh, uh, to help communities, to, to, to prepare better fathers, which in turn solidifies and, and makes better families, which in turn raises better kids sure. uh, and identifies and exposes children to young people at, people at a young age to the merits of community involvement, responsibility, uh, education, and, and therefore increases the probability of success in our neighborhoods and communities because sure. you're turning out people who are, you know, they're, they're poised to become successful. Sure. Well, you know, we got to say uh, congratulations to you. I understand your son is uh, going off to college here. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. I, I guess I'm getting a little bit older. Um, it's, it's truly a blessing. My son, uh, will be attending Charleston Southern University in the fall on a full academic and basketball scholarship. As a matter of fact, he leaves in June. and uh, That's not you know, too far away. That's not too far, but you know, it's, it's something that uh, you know, people ask me all the time. What are you going to do when he leaves? I said, I'll get seconds, <laughs> <laughs> maybe even thirds now. You know? <laughs> There'll be a little bit more of those <laughs> snacks and treats left when I get home from work. Yeah. But you and your wife, your wife is a teacher too, and you have spent a lot of time molding, I guess we could say, to the fact of being a success for your children. Uh, my, my wife is, is uh, she works, she's a, a, an assistant in the guidance office at uh, Greenwood High School. Um, she has a degree in business and she worked for WIA for a long time before deciding, well, when these boys get to high school, I want to be there with them. I don't know whether that was to watch them all the time. I don't know. And, 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 and they're not all that sure either. They're, they're not all that sure either. It's like, you know, every time we look around, mom's there. But um, my wife is a college graduate. She attended Southern Wesleyan University. And um, I attended Stetson University in Florida. Uh, I um, we're, we're blessed to, to have multiple degrees and advanced degrees. And and, and, and that what made you want to be uh, a, to go into education and have all these degrees and everything? Well, you know, I had good people that 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 saw potential in me throughout my life. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, I can remember teachers that when I was underachieving and and, and 
middle school and saying, you know, Steve Coleman, you got to be the the, 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 the the dumbest smart kid I've ever seen. Um, I like that, the yeah, dumbest smart kid. I mean, I've had kid, teachers yeah. tell me that, and, and, and they haven't always been black teachers. You right. know, it's uh, just teachers, just people. Right. Um, and then in high school, I, you know, I've always had a support network, and, and I was blessed to have been guided by some very, very good people. Uh, and then one day it just kind of clicked. You know, this is all right. I, I, I'm pretty good at this. And I got in college, and college wasn't difficult uh, for me. It, it was. It was. It was. It was a job. It was a chore. It was long nights and those sorts of things. But I guess I was always someone who could see the or, or visualize the end of the rainbow. And, and I knew I wanted to do things in life that were going to require me to have a set of marketable skills and some credentials to do so. Not just play basketball. Not, yeah, you know, I, it, it's amazing to me how people, uh, how, how often individuals uh, um, think of all of us athletes as someone who all the, the goal was to play pro basketball. Well, I can tell you this, and, and for all the people that are listening, if a young man tells you I want to be a professional athlete, don't kill that dream. <laughs> just make sure that you provide the alternative, which is more than likely the reality. Um, because if you had asked me up until the time I was 22 years, I was training to be a professional athlete. I, I wanted to be a professional basketball player, and I sure. would have told you that. Um, and if you had given up on me after hearing that, saying, oh, this guy is unrealistic, you would have also given up on the fact of or an opportunity of learning that I also had a very strong academic GPA. I was a dual major. I'd already been accepted into grad school. And in actuality, in my senior year in college, I was a grad student. But I would still say it. This is what I want to do. This is there's there's the dream, and then, and then there's, there's the reality. reality. Yes. And uh, you know I had a constant focus on the reality. But what we've always done with with our young men is is expose them to educational opportunities and and uh, educational uh, programs um, when there are things that are going on at, at, in the schools and in communities. We we took them whenever extracurricular things that were going on at the high school that didn't deal with sports things like cultural events and we were taking them to museums and things of that nature and what we would always hoped was is that it would click with them and they want to uh, succeed on their want own. to succeed on their own and I'm thankful that they have um, and it, it, it's interesting but it's a job it, it is a job and, and my sons are are no more talented no more gifted uh, than anyone else's son uh, or daughter it, it's just a matter of making them of doing enough and having the, the the fortitude to stick through it and say sooner or later they're going to get this and knowing as a parent they have to get this in today's society and we're fortunate that they did they're, they're good students pretty good guys sure now you have also started something in fact you told me about it last fall our people today.com what is this you know I, I, one of the things I always fancied myself as being and, I, and I've, I've always been good at it um, is writing and, and I thought at one point I wanted to be a journalist and all those sorts of things and I'd always fancied writing a book mm -hmm. or two or three and I've actually started writing a book or two or three and I'd get to a point where it's just like okay I don't have the time to sit down and write this but I always wanted to publish something and I always wanted to I always wanted to be a part of uplifting the African American community of being uh, of providing a source of information that is 100% positive and informational that exposes all of the facets of the African American community to the greater community. Um, and what we came up with is, is ourpeopletoday.com. And uh, you know, I, I never thought I was I was able to to be a reporter or or, or to, to be able to produce a newspaper. But what it has become is an online infozine is what I call it. It's an informational little magazine. But we have categories in there like local news things and um, news stories. Uh, we have sports stories. But what we're trying to do is concentrate on the people as opposed to the event. Mm -hmm. You know, and Greenwood High School won by 40. Okay. But <clears throat> let me tell you about the great things that kids like Mark Adams and Hold on one second. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Okay, carry on. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, but we want to tell you about good things that, 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 that outstanding young student athletes are doing, like Caleb Tamils and Mark Adams and my own son, Jared Coleman, and Kelvis Loudon at 
at Emerald and, and you mean uh, how many basketballs? Um, uh, how many scores they care made? less about the points. Oh, okay. Could so it's not about, about the points. points. It's about the individual because not only are these guys outstanding athletes, but these guys are great students, and and the role modeling that they'll be able to provide by using their athletic gifts combined with their academic talents mm -hmm. and their their success in the classroom is what's absolutely most important. You know, we I've been a coach and an AAU coach in this community for a long time and from an athletic standpoint I've always always preached the numbers to guys. You know, one tenth of one percent of people in the world will be a professional athlete. But you know, the opportunity to be a, a, a doctor, a lawyer, uh, 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 teacher, mm -hmm. um, automobile mechanic, uh, police officer, fireman, any of these types of these types of careers are easily accessible when compared to some endeavor in sport. Sure. But ourpeopletoday.com is a positive information source about the African American community, health and wellness, uh, black history is a big part of it, um, identifying and, and uh, promoting what's going on in the faith-based community amongst our black churches and all the good and wonderful things that they're doing as, as, uh, as strong influences in our communities. Uh, we have a who's who section where we send out um, a form to guidance counselors and we tell them, you know, give us a picture and a synopsis of the wonderful things that this student is doing at your school. We put it out there and we post it so that when you click on the picture, you hear something that's positive and forward and, and really moving as opposed to clicking on pictures and seeing all the negativity. We don't want to be a news source or an information source that... I think that's great. <laughs> now you were telling me you were you're getting ready to start a program through um, ourpeopletoday.com. Yes. We, what is the program? We, we're, we're working on a program called First Degree. And uh, first degree, interestingly enough, I wish I had announced it before I, I, my brother's keeper, but first degree is a program just like that. Um, we want to go into the communities, into the churches, um, into the schools, <coughs> um, into uh, those areas, and really promote the merits of education. We want, you know, here's the, the ideal goal, and we know it's a pipe dream, but here's the deal. Um, with Piedmont Technical College being available, mm -hmm. we honestly believe that every minority student, every black student in our service district should go to college. And we want to get as many of those people into college as absolutely possible. And get them uh, to that first degree. And get them to that first degree. What does is, what is accomplishing that first degree do for a person? You know, it sets you up for success for the rest of your life. And you can think of first degree and you said it, and I'm going to steal this from you, I want you to know that, just so you know. But you made a great point that even I hadn't thought about. That first degree might be, that first degree is your high school diploma. That first degree might be, that might be getting past and, and successfully getting through middle school. Mm -hmm. um, getting your high school diploma, progressing to your first college degree. And then, why stop there? get a master's, become doctor somebody, or, or, and do those sorts of things. And we want to, the students to understand that there is money out there. You can't afford to go to college. You have to make wise decisions. Um, I happen to work with an institution that is a tremendously wise decision and an economical decision for most. Um, and, uh, and to do my part I, uh, in, in uh, promoting what's most important, uh, besides God and family, to our society is quality education and training. And you need to check out ourpeopletoday.com. You know, you didn't have enough on your plate, did you? No, I didn't. I, I'm always <laughs> just kind of moving around. <laughs> Adding other things. things. And, you know, I, I've uh, been blessed, and uh, I, I work for a wonderful institution that's a change agent that I believe in. and. Um, you know, as a representative and uh, also uh, as a community citizen. I, I just want to see what's to do what I can do, whatever I can do, um, and if, with as many people who are willing to help me um, provide opportunities for children, for young people. And of course, as an African American male, it is incumbent upon me and it's a duty of mine to do everything I can in, that, in the black community to assist young people as well.
I think that's terrific. Steve Coleman, I salute you. Thank you so much for coming on and being with us here today, Steve. Thanks for having me. All right. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Don't forget to check out our peopletoday.com. Bye-bye, everybody.